हेलो एवरीवन गुड मॉर्निंग टुडे इज थर्टी फर्स्ट ऑफ जनवरी माय नेम इज साहिल एंड वेलकम टू द न्यूज़पेपर एनालिसिस सो फ्रेंड्स इन द टुडेज वीडियो वी विल बी टेकिंग अप द एंटायर एनालिसिस ऑफ द हिंदू न्यूज़पेपर एज वेल एज वी विल आल्सो बी टेकिंग अप द गुड आर्टिकल फ्रॉम द इंडियन एक्सप्रेस एक्सप्लेन सेक्शन एंड द एक्सप्लेनर पी डी एफ आई विल बी यूजिंग हेयर यू कैन डाउनलोड दैट पी फ्रॉम अवर टेलीग्राम चैनल द लिंक फॉर द टेलीग्राम चैनल इज गिवन इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स यू कैन इवन सर्च इट इन टेलीग्राम बाई थिंकिंग पैलेट नाउ First of all let's see the important articles that are relevant for our examination and let's try to understand this art to identify which articles are important and which are not important so first of all uh, if we see the indian express explained section the first article is talking about ukraine russia and india so in this article the key takeaways we will be taking because we have seen that now a kind of a, again inten uh, basically a kind of intense situation has developed between the russia and particularly the west so we'll see this thing then the below article india's uh, in india visit by oman's al zabi so the india and oman relations will be seen by this particular article after that we'll move to the hindu newspaper though first of all uh, there is a text and the context section so first article is talking about the importance of the nord stream pipeline so with the with the nord stream pipeline it's uh, basically what it is and what are the issues associated with it we will be seeing fine with respect to our ir then further moving on uh, we have the dli scheme and the chip making industry in india so this dli scheme and its important importance will be seen then after that we reach to the hindu uh, first page so here we can see that uh, the killings of uh, the killing of some in, in, uh, militants etc has been talked about nothing guys very much important with respect to our examination point of view pegasus issue to royal budget session so just we have seen that a report has been published by which it has been said that the pegasus spyware which is developed by the israeli group that is the nso so a uh, few day few months back guys we have seen that there was a report that around the world the governments are using this pegasus spyware to spy on to the journalists on to the judges and even on some other activist also and india's name was also into that particular list so because of that now there is one more new report that has been published which said that india had went into a deal and had brought this pegasus spyware so this particular thing has developed now into a political controversy fine then further epf to to audit the um, epf to appoint auditor to track the fund managers we'll see that what has been provided here then after that the political articles are not important for our examination is it clear then uh, the advertisements etc that are in between fine not relevant we'll reach to the editorial page so showing commitment to equity in the budget we'll see this article with respect to the equity limits of the power so guys with respect to the constitutional restraint we'll see this article what has been provided then russia should do more to reduce tension fine we'll see this article along with that indian express article mahatma gandhi the out of the box thinker fine uh, so this is also there then the year on myanmar's ns horrible is so with respect to the the coup that has happened in myanmar we'll see this article fine then the for the finance minister to note basically guys you see there are couple of articles that are coming which are just basically giving a prescription that how the next budget should be fine so the budget will be announced tomorrow and then all these particular things will already be seen that okay what has been accounted and what has not been accounted so before just the budget okay all the different different prescriptions that are there you don't need to necessarily see the every article because once the budget will come entire picture will become very clear and then that will be the important development that we have to see fine after that uh, basically the political uh, article or a very specific regional issue not important for the examination then guys uh, after that we move on uh, prop sort into the pegasus case fine now already in the supreme court the petition has been filed for this pegasus whether india had used it or not now the fresh petitions are being uh, filed up gehri dosti says israel pm about ties with the india fine so just a one liner concept nothing much important is there into this article another brahmos deal in the pipeline so guys just two days back we have seen that the india had signed a deal with the philippines where the brahmos missile will be exported to the philippines fine so this article already we have seen now guys this uh, deal that we have signed and fine uh, basically uh, uh, philippines marines were to be provided this particular brahmos missile now the army of philippines also wants such kind of export deal so there is it, it is in a pipeline however please don't go 
in every such kind of a development because for examination such kind of things are not important thematic questions are important which comes here fine then after that the political this entire page is filled with the political news please ignore it don't see these articles then uh, every day rising number of cases etc are not important however here we can see government is planning to link the digital ids so this particular thing is important we'll see this article with respect to the examination supreme court judges urged by the use of social media to troll their work now we see this particular thing that uh, basically the supreme courts they are being uh, criticized many a times because of the decisions that they have taken now basically particularly onto the social media the supreme court judges are being trolled now in this particular thing there are the two approaches that are there number one it is believed that is there a freedom of speech and expression and even if they want to criticize the judges it should be allowed because and at see till the point you are not scandalizing the institutions since uh, till the point you are not lowering the institution of judiciary fine we can allow such freedom of speech and expression however the another viewpoint that comes here this viewpoint is this that this particular thing be impacts the dignity at the end of the day see institution and institutional functionary are not actually separate fine so the judge represents the judiciary so at the end of the day if a personal attack on a judge is even being made it will be amounting to some of a criticism or some of the lowering of the dignity of the institution as well so some due noting is to be taken up fine so guys basically what had happened in a, in the speech chief justice of india had just tried that okay uh, basically this trend that is evolving okay then further moving on after that um, uh, on the world page fine uh, basically the trend that is the russia us relation that is going on they are such kind of a things are being continued amid children relation new pla history returns spotlight to 1962 war now guys with respect to the examination ac academic utility article is not very much important north korea fire fire test most powerful missile since 2017 fine then further uh, today is monday so on monday business page doesn't come there's money wise page that we are having however it contains much of the financial advice etc okay for example how to not to how to avoid rejection of insurance claims such kind of things not important then we reach to the sports page so that is all guys about the overview of the articles that are important now let's see the important and relevant articles one by one in the detail now as we start our every class with the gs quote so today we'll be taking the quote from the william gladstone William Gladstone says that when the power of love overcomes the love of power, the world will know peace. So such a deep impact and impactful and a meaningful quote. When the power of love overcomes the love of power, fine, the world will know the peace. When the uh, when basically the, when the regard for the human beings, when empathy, compassion fine will become more important than the love of power that is the politics then the true peace will emerge in the world so guys this love of power the art of consolidating the power has led to creation of disputes has led to creation of proxy wars had led to creation of vested narratives under which the people are just trying to mend their own vendettas and this love of power this consolidation of power has manufactured the disputes in which the people have died so the love of power needs it to uh, basically that power of love needs to triumph the love of power so this is a very very impact and meaningful thing that we can use in gs paper number four ethics as well as in gs paper number two you can utilize the idea fine moreover uh, there are the philosophical essays also there where, where you can utilize it so that is all guys about this particular quote and now let's take the first article so the first article we have taken from the text and the context section of the Hindu newspaper which is very much similar on the uh, with some similar to the explained section of Indian Express that comes here. So the DLI scheme and the chip making industry in India. So this article will important will be important for the GS paper number three economy Indian economy and issues related to it. So here it will be important. Now before guys moving into this particular article let's see some of the background which will help you to consolidate this topic even more. Now there are the two developments that had happened and guys okay just one thing I want to tell you if in case you don't know. See the way in which 
often I try to provide you the background. Okay, it is not just that, okay, for that article, you needed to see it. But there is one more thing. See, understanding a topic in a broad theme, fine, will always be making a sense for you. Hardly the question will be specifically asked onto the scheme, though that is a possibility. But guys, many a times when the broad questions are there, fine, understanding the wider utility is something which builds up your understanding, which builds up your opinion. Okay, so please try to learn the skill. Okay, that is something which is more important. So I hope that you are getting the message. Okay, see, there are two things. After the coming of the pandemic, after the coming of the pandemic, there are the two trends that have developed. First of all, the reliance on the reliance on the tech gadgets, the reliance on the tech gadgets have increased a lot because the work from home came and because of this work from him, whom everybody needed the personal computers, the education turned online, people needed the mobile, the tablets for their kids to study. After that, many of the new possibilities on the internet had developed, which again need much of the tech tech gadgets. Is it clear? Then guys, the second thing that has happened into the pandemic is that India realized their over, over dependence on the foreign countries for many of the critical components. And in this particular direction, we came out with the Atma Nirbhar Bharat Abhiyan in 2020. Atma Nirbhar Bharat Abhiyan in 2020. So these are actually the two developments that had happened onto the sideline. Now guys, see, understand this particular thing. Today, as we talk about the critical components into the manufacturing supply chain in the world, there are the semiconductor chips that are very important. There are the semiconductor chips that are very important. Why? Because these semiconductor chips, they are a very critical component on or for almost all the technological gadgets in the car, computers tablets, mobile phones or every technological gadget that you can think there are the semiconductor chips that are used in that one thing. Second guys that India is one of the largest consumer of the electronic appliances, electronic goods and for the electronic appliances we are deeply dependent on two three countries. Number one it is China, number two is South Korea. South Korea the Samsung is from South Korea and you know the consumption so China, South Korea and in some capacity the Taiwan we are very much dependent on these three countries so now see basically so therefore there is comes an idea that we need to develop two things number one as a part of this Atma Nirbhar Bharat Abhiyan as a part of this Atma Nirbhar Bharat Abhiyan we need to develop the self-sufficiency we need to develop the self-sufficiency in the electronic appliances is it clear number one thing number two thing is that as electronic appliances and much of the tech gadgets they are dependent on the semiconductor chips we need to develop the capacity for this semiconductor chip industry also in India. This is the second realization. Now guys, the third realization that comes here is that you, you can infer this thing. Fine. That right now, India is facing the worst level of unemployment. Even before the pandemic of 2020, the unemployment rates in India fell 45 years low. So unemployment is a very big problem and after coming of pandemic, it has increased further. So again, the semiconductor development and the electronic ecosystem, electronic goods ecosystem development will create much of employment for large number of people also. So there are large number of low hanging fruits, large number of low hanging fruits if we develop the electronic sector in India and semiconductor chip manufacturing in India. I will paraphrase economic advantage are there and then strategic advantage are there. Dependence will reduce. Now guys, in this particular direction, now what government has done, government has come out with the DLI scheme that is the design linked incentive scheme. DLI scheme that is the design linked incentive scheme. Now what is this idea of the design linked incentive scheme? Basically guys in this design linked okay uh, so what is the idea of this design linked incentive scheme? So guys the idea is simply this that government is saying that if you will come in India we will provide you the incentive to develop the semiconductor plants. These semiconductor plants, they are also called as the fabrication plants. So the semiconductor, the fab, both names are used. So the government has come out with the idea that we will provide incentive to the semiconductor plants in India 
two things are there. Number one, the government had said that the companies who will be coming, their 30% of the capital expenditure fine will be provided by the government. So let's say you are developing a plant and for that you need to invest into the machinery and plant. Let's say 100 rupees are to be invested. Now that 100 rupees plant machinery that you are investing, government says 30%. 30% we will be providing. Okay. 30% will be provided by the government as a part of a capital expenditure. And then the second thing that is there, fine, the second thing that is there is that government is saying that the 4 to 6% of the net sales, fine, on through this also the incentive will be provided. So whatever the net sale will be there, for example, let's say that the ABC company developed their semiconductor plant in India and they are doing a sale of let's say 100 rupees. So over this 100 rupees for the next 5 years, Remember, for the next five years, four to six percent of incentive will be provided. Okay, so it means four rupees to six rupees will be given as an additional incentive for next five years. All these things are being done to attract the investment into the semiconductor manufacturing in India. So this is the DLI scheme, two components, 30% plus four to six percent additional incentive. Now, guys, India had invited the application from hundred of the domestic companies, startups, S. SMEs, small and medium enterprises that you come and you participate into this designed linked incentive scheme, we have asked the applications. Moreover, guys, at the same time, the IT ministry, at the same time, the IT ministry, it has also provided this thing that IT ministry has also provided that the startups, MSMEs or the R&D, R&D institutions or anybody who has the capacity, they should train the engineers, fine, and 85,000 qualified engineers on semi conductor design and manufacturing they are to be trained why why because these 85000 people will then be employed into the semiconductor manufacturing is it clear so this is something which has happened here okay okay uh voice uh, i think voice is clear please confirm it is clear or not okay dli dli stands for the domestic linked incentive scheme okay so just in the start we discussed it stands for the domestic domestic linked incentive scheme okay so this is the context that has come now guys when we talk about this domestic linked incentive scheme as it will develop the semiconductor capacity in india so it will benefit a large number of sectors the auto sector fine you know that today there are so much uh, waiting period going on for the cars why because within the car also there are the hundreds of the semiconductor chips that are used so in india the electro the automobile sector has got a little bit stagnated why because the cars delivery are not being made because the semiconductor is in shortage then in the telecom sector now we are coming with the 5g and into the 5g large number of critical equipments are to be manufactured there these semiconductors will be used moreover in the manufacturing of mobile also the semiconductors are to be used then the medical technology fine it also needs a large number of semiconductors conductors into the devices into the machineries CT scans and all such kind of machines so because of uh, the shortage all these sectors have actually got impacted and there this DLI scheme will be helping a lot moreover India's dependence for the semiconductors is on the USA Japan South Korea Taiwan Israel Netherlands and in some capacity on China also fine so basically that reliance or dependence on them will be reduced moreover see this particular thing when we talk about the semiconductor in India, already the global companies which are manufacturing the semiconductors in their respective countries, they have started the research and development, they have built the design centers in India, but actual manufacturing has not been started. Now this particular incentive will give them a nudge, will give them a push that okay, already you are doing R&D, design center are there, let's start manufacturing also. Today, when we talk about the investing into a uh, semiconductor plant, it needs at least 5 billion to 10 billion dollar of investment. And because of that particular thing also, the plants were not being developed. But now as India has promised to compensate 30% of the capital expenditure, this particular barrier will might go down. Moreover, India has one more advantage also. See, when we talk about the semiconductor manufacturing, there are many other minerals, fine gases that are to be used into the manufacturing of the semiconductor fab, uh, fabs, semi semiconductors. Now guys, India is a very important part in a supply chain, which actually is manufacturing the needed minerals, gases which are needed. So this can provide an additional advantage. Now see, there is a huge economic potential of semiconductor industry around the world also. It is believed that by 2030, the semiconductor 
semiconductor industry will be worth one trillion dollar fine and as this industry will grow and if india will develop the capabilities here india's economic prospects will also increase fine india can grow fast to reach 64 billion dollars by 2026 from 27 billion dollar that uh, the, the, the uh, 27 billion dollar trade that is semi that is into the semiconductor industry today is it clear or not so this is guys a very important development and in the economic revival of india economic revival this dli design linked incentive scheme we can use so that is all about it and now moving to the next article so this article uh, again taken from the hindu the importance of the nord stream pipeline so what this particular article is talking about this Nord stream pipeline its strategic implication are being discussed here so it will be important in our gs paper number two gs paper number two international affairs gs paper number two international affairs and international developments this particular article will be important now understand this particular thing first of all let's see the map here i hope that the map is clear to you so here guys we have the germany here we have the Russia. So where we have Germany and Russia and here we can see that the two orange green orange and green color lines are there. Now this green one is uh, the orange one is the Nord Stream 1 and the green one is the Nord Stream 2. So this Nord Stream 1 and Nord Stream 2 are nothing but the pipeline that are connecting the Germany and the Russia. Now these two pipelines will transport, will export the, uh, will, will export the gas from the Russia to the Germany. So gas will be exported from Russia to Germany and then from Germany that particular gas will be export, with some of it will be consumed within the Germany and then it will be sent to the Europe through the European grid. So it will be sent through to the Europe through the European grid. So now we can see that on to the side of Germany there is there is uh, Griefswald. Griefswald is there in Germany which is connecting the Nord Stream from the side of Germany and in the Russia. Fine. The Nord Stream 1 it will be connected to Weiborg. The Nord Stream 1 will be connected to the Weiborg and the Nord Stream 2 will be connected to the Oostluga. So the Weiborg and Oostluga. So see keep one thing particular in your mind that with respect to the mapping also the question could be asked that recently the two places were seen into the news where they are. So the Weiborg in Russia, Oostluga in Russia, Weiborg is the connecting point of Nord Stream 1 in the Russia and Oostluga is also the connecting point of the Nord Stream 2 in the Russia and on to the side of Germany there is the Greece wall that is there. Fine. So here we can see that through the Baltic Sea, through the Baltic Sea, the gas will be exported. Fine. This is the Nord Stream 2 pipeline that is there. Fine. Now, guys, these are two pipelines. Fine. The, now, first of all, this Nord Stream 2, it has just been completed in September 2021. So because of this thing, this Nord Stream, Nord Stream pipeline becomes very much important. Now, guys, this Nord Stream pipeline, it actually goes from the EEZ, that is the exclusive economic zone of many countries. So it passes from the exclusive economic zone of the Russia, Finland, Sweden, Denmark, Germany and actually the territorial waters on which there is a sovereignty of a country it passes from the territorial waters of the Russia Denmark and Germany just to focus on this particular map just focus on this particular map now guys if you have known the UN clause fine if you don't know also not a problem there is the United Nation Convention on the law of the seas United Nation Convention on the Law of the Seas, UNCLOS. UN clause provides that 200 nautical miles will be the exclusive economic zone of that particular country. And within the exclusive economic zone, the country can take the economic decisions as well. Now see, as you are seeing this particular Nord Stream pipeline, the Sweden is there. Is it clear? Then guys, there, there, there is the Denmark and so many of the countries are there. And as it is passing, so many of the ec exclusive economic zones it is crisscrossing fine so all these are the exclusive economic zone that it is crisscrossing now there are the concerns with respect to this pipeline let's understand them one by one very important part the first concern that is there onto this particular pipeline it is the environmental concern now germany had provided already into the COP26 that had happened a few months back that Germany will reduce their dependence onto the fossil fuels. Germany will go to solar technologies and the renewable technologies. Now into this capacity the Germany is exporting the increasing gas. Fine. It, its reliance onto the fossil fuel is actually not going down. So environmentalists are criticizing it. Second thing that is there is that there is a strategic 
problem to the USA also. Why? Because see, I have told you that this particular pipeline, I have told you that this particular pipeline will uh, will export the gas from Russia to the Germany and then through the European grid, the gas will be provided to the another countries and to the Europe. So what will happen over the time, the dependence of the Europeans on the Russia, it will increase a lot. And then Russia will use this particular influence against the Europe. This is the narrative of the USA. Moreover, it has been said that this particular pipeline can be used as a geopolitical weapon. How the geopolitical weapon? See, tomorrow the Russia will say that, okay, let's say that XYZ European country, it should not cooperate with the USA, otherwise we will cut your supply. Now you know energy dependency is assumed so much. So as a geopolitical weapon, this particular pipeline can be used. Then after that, Ukraine also has the problem into this particular thing. What is the problem of Ukraine? Ukraine had said that, see, as this particular pipeline is going from the sea, Traditionally, what has happened, whatever the pipelines have passed, they have passed from the Ukraine. Okay, now here you can just see. Is it clear? Fine. Here we can see that the pipeline is going from the pipeline is going from the Russia uh, from the water. Fine. Ukraine is not here into the map. So as the Ukraine will be bypassed, the Ukraine will lose around two billion dollars into the transit fees. Fine. Moreover, it has been said that it this particular transit fees will actually impact the economical stability into the Ukraine. Moreover, the Poland and Belarus they have also said that some of the transit fees they will also lose because the pipeline as it is passing from the water they might not be compensated in it. Moreover, it has been said that because of this particular pipeline, further the Ukraine's stability will be impacted. Why? You know today that there is the warnings that have been given by the Russia that they will invade the Ukraine. Now, if the pipeline would have been passing from the Ukraine, there is a vested interest of the Russia to maintain the stability into the Ukraine for the safety of the particular pipeline. However, now the pipeline is not passing from Ukraine. So, the Ukraine's stability will not be a concern for the, for the Russia. This is the thing that has happened happened fine moreover guys it has also been said uh, moreover now it has been said that actually uh, the western countries particularly the usa they are using this nord stream as a bargaining chip usa had said that we will stop the we will stop this particular nord stream pipeline if you will attack the ukraine it is asking the russia so the west is using this nord stream as a bargaining chip against the russia to deter the russia from attacking the ukraine and the usa had asked the support from the western countries also so that please support us please support us now the germany is little bit reluctant why because germany is getting a lot of benefit out of it and now the russia is also considering this particular thing why because guys the, for the russia the natural gas is very big important economic contributor russia has one of the largest natural gas reserves in the world and 40 percent of the russia's budget they come from the sale of the gas and oil so therefore for it also the Nord stream pipeline is very much important so this is the geostrategic significance of this particular particular pipeline project i hope guys that you have understood it all these points find the four uh, five four or five points that we have discussed here i think they are clear please uh, use the pdf that is provided into the telegram channel also that is about it and now moving to the next article now in india a visit by oman's al zabi old friendship and strategic ties see uh, okay, uh, sir, Hindi may be news analysis kare, Hindi medium student ko bhi aise hi kafi knowledge milega. Uh, yes, dear, I can understand the concern, map ki problem samaj pa raha hu, lekin uh, there is one practical problem that is there. Fine, uh, basically making the two, uh, using the bilingual will make analysis very lengthy. It will go around 1.5 hours, 2 hours, one thing, fine. Second thing is that making the two analysis right now is little bit not possible that is one small concern that is there however third thing that i am talking and guys this is a very very strong assertive message that i am going to give please understand what is the case when we are preparing for the union public service commission fine the questions that are coming moreover the study material which is needed today okay if we just rely on the Hindi medium, okay, we might not be able to fulfill that thing. Clear? The research papers, internet, articles, good articles, everything which is being published that is in the English, fine. So, being a UPSC aspirant, actually, I don't say that this is fair. I don't say that this is fair. But what happened is that if 
your english skill is not very much good or not i'm not say that very good but if they are not fair you will never be able to get a fair advantage into this particular stream improving your improving your english improving your english it is a kind of a most important practical requirement that has come today though it is said that the examination is being conducted in both hindi and english dono mein exam hota hai but if your english is not fair there will be a specific disadvantage that is there every source you cannot get in hindi is it clear or not so aapko english improve karna it is not some a kind of a thing ke that acha hai agar kar lenge to no it has become a prerequisite so i will insist please read the english newspaper try to understand it your own fine because you will always be at a disadvantage except this particular thing fine so we need to be flexible in seeing okay i know that uh, many of you guys who see this thing aapka jo background hai it might be hindi okay but you we have to shed that rigidity ke that abhi tak humne hindi mein padha hai hum hindi mein hi padhenge is it clear exam bhi hindi mein hi denge aur hindi mein hi karenge just see the numbers every year the upsc is coming out of a result see the numbers of the people from hindi medium that is a sad reality that is there but we need to get aware with the practicality also is it clear or not so the practicality dictates this thing you need to develop the good command over the english if the clearing of examination is a concern fine so this is just a kind of a message that i wanted to give i hope that aap sabko samajh mein aa raha hai you are getting that particular thing but yes for the hindi students there are certain things which we might plan in the short term so that is also there a consideration fine so that is just a thing okay now moving on moving on into this particular uh, the new article that is we are going to take up so this article the visit by oman's al zabi old friendship and the strategic ties fine now this particular article it is talking about the visit of the Om oman's highest defense official into the india and the importance of the oman with respect to the india will see by this particular article so this article will be important for our gs paper number 2 international relations and in the india gulf or india oman relation this article will be important so let's first of all see what the article is talking about fine so context maine aapko pehle hi bata diya i have told you that the context is that india is hosting the oman's top defense official mohammad nasir al zabi fine he will be coming in india and he will be co-chairing the joint military cooperation committee now what is this joint military cooperation committee now this is the highest level of body this is the highest level of engagement forum between the india and oman on the defense matters so on the india and oman defense matters there is the highest body that is the joint military cooperation committee it will be co-chaired by the oman's defense official now guys when we talk about the defense exchanges between the two sides it has increased a lot recently actually what has happened the india and the oman they have uh, basically uh, had had exchange a guided framework mou guided framework mou now this guided framework mou was signed in 2020 and it has renewed the defense partnership between the india and oman and in that line only the oman's defense uh, official is coming in india and will co-chair this joint military cooperation committee now see when we talk about the oman oman is a very important partner for india so you can just see on the map you can just see on the map so in the gulf region here we have the oman okay we have the oman just a minute we have the oman here is it clear now guys what is the importance of the oman let's understand this importance of oman one by one and by that we'll understand the strategic significance of this particular visit that, that has been there so oman is the only country into the gulf with which with with which all our three services of the indian armed forces they are conducting the regular bilateral exercises they are in talks fine so the so here the air force the army fine the navy all are in regular contacts now why this cooperation will be important guys you understand this particular thing that here is the arabian sea and here there is oman now are into the arabian sea there is a very big problem of piracy find the country the basically countries such as somalia they are carrying a lot of piracy and this particular region is also important because a large number of indian indian shipments or the shipments that are going to india are passing from this particular region so the anti piracy is a very important thing and in this anti piracy 
थिंग वी कैन कॉपरेट विद द ओमान दैट इज़ अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट डेवलपमेंट दैट इज देयर देन द सेकेंड इंपॉर्टेंस विद द ओमान इज दैट सी द चाइना इट इज़ बिल्डिंग अ लॉट ऑफ इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर इन टू द कंट्रीज इन अरेबियन सी एंड इन ऑर्डर टू काउंटर द चाइना इन ऑर्डर टू काउंटर द बेल्ट एंड रोड इनिशिएटिव ऑफ चाइना वी नीड सम पार्टनर इन टू द गल्फ रीजन एंड देयर द ओमान प्लेज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट रोल वाई नंबर वन ऑल द थ्री सर्विसेज आर हैविंग द रेगुलर बायोलिट्रल टॉक्स विद द ओमान सो इट शोज द कन्वर्जेंस फाइन इट शोज द मिलिट्री कन्वर्जेंस बिटवीन द टू कंट्री इट इज वेरी मच हाई सेकेंड थिंग इज दैट गाइज दैट वट हैज हैपेंड रिसेंटली द ओमान हैज गिवन वन ऑफ द पोर्ट टू इंडिया फाइन दैट इज हेयर यू कैन सी द दकम पोर्ट इज देयर नाउ दिस दकम पोर्ट Fine. Now this Dakam port. Fine. India has secured the access rights to this particular port of Dakam into the Oman for the military use and for the logistical support. And by getting the access rights of this port of Dakam, what we can do? We can increase the presence of India around the Arabian Sea. Is it clear? Basically, it can work as a kind of a extended base of India. Fine. This is one thing. And by getting this particular port, India's maritime strategy now into the Indian Ocean. It India's maritime strategy can be improved. We can counter the Chinese influence into this particular region by using this particular port. Moreover, guys, when we talk about this port of Dakam, this port of Dakam, it is uh, overlooking the Arabian Sea and Indian Ocean. That is very much good. But guys, it is also in very much close proximity to the Chaab Bahar port in Iran. Fine. So just here you can see here in map. So here we have the Iran. In the Iran, we have built the Chaab Bahar port. Now. I have told you into the Saturday's newspaper analysis also that this Chaab Bahar port is very much important when we need to reach the Central Asia. Fine, uh, guys, just you uh, just a three four days back, the Central Asia meet has also happened, which has been which has been chaired by the Prime Minister of India. So the Central Asia is very important, and reaching Central Asia, Iran's Chaab Bahar port is very much important. And see the Chaab Bahar port of Iran and the Dakam port. Fine, so it will provide a network of infrastructure to the India in the Arabian Sea in. to the indian ocean and this network of infrastructure can potentially leverage more india's position so this is very much important moreover guys nearly nearby this the comport the assumption island is being developed in shichels and the agelaga islands are being developed into the mauritius so in the mauritius and shichels the agreement that we got fine the the comport is also nearby that also so this net of or this web of infrastructure will help india is it clear moreover guys india has also deployed the attack submarine to this particular the comport fine and by that particular thing india's further military uh, military uh, 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 you can say that the military presence will also be emboldened into this particular region that is one importance the strategic importance the most important one then guys the second importance of the oman is that in oman we see that a large number of indian diaspora is living 6.2 lakhs are people are there in the oman and large number of them 4.8 lakhs are the workers and the professionals so the diaspora is there and where Our our diaspora, our community, our people are living in order to maintain their safety, in order to maintain their well-being. There, we need to have the good relations. Fine, India, Oman is also participating regularly into the Indian Ocean Naval Symposium. So, by that virtue, also further the collaboration on the exchanges with with the Oman can also be enhanced. So, therefore, this particular agreement, this particular visit, is an important one. Okay, so this is about this particular thing. I hope that you have understood it. And guys, all these particular points, please note. them down a question can be asked because into the past country specific questions have been asked particularly those countries are chosen with which some high level meet has happened or agreement has happened now moving to the next article ukraine russia and india now guys see in the article much of substance is not directly relevant for our examination is it clear fine however there are few things which are there which we can use and that only thing we will be going to take so basically the ukraine russia and india the gs paper number 2 international affairs international relations this article will hold some of utility fine let's first of all discuss about the background this let's discuss about the background see every day we are having three four articles into the newspaper which is talking about the russia russia us and ukraine 
रशिया यू एस एंड यूक्रेन सो बेसिकली द यूक्रेन हैज आई हैव टोल्ड यू मेनी नंबर ऑफ टाइम्स इट हैज बिकम द प्रॉक्सी ग्राउंड फॉर द कोल्ड वॉर दैट इज गोइंग ऑन बिटवीन द रशिया एंड द यू एस ए द आइडियोलॉजिकल डिफरेंसिस फ्रॉम बिटवीन द रशिया एंड यू एस ए दे आर गोइंग फ्रॉम नाइनटीन फोर्टी फाइव रीजन बींग रशिया इज 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 बेसिकली इंक्लाइंड टूवर्ड्स कॉम्युनिस कॉम्युनिस्ट रशिया fine the ukraine has been there now what has happened in the ukraine russia is again and again interfering and as the russia is interfering into the ukraine fine the us is coming on to the confrontation so let's talk about a little bit on to this russia ukraine and the impact that is there on the india so basically guys there is a reference of a book that has been given that is the lenin's tomb now in the the lenin's tomb the last days of the soviet empire it has been there has there is a quote of vladimir lenin so lenin had said that for us to lose ukraine would be to lose our head so the put, uh, the lenin the lenin had provided that the ukraine is a very very important uh, important for the russia's security calculus so guys here just you can see that you have the ukraine just a minute so here you have the ukraine fine here you have russia here you have belarus here we have romania then this particular region in green it is the crimea this region is green it is in the crimea now the crimea was captured by russia in 2014 this crimea was captured into the russia by the russia in 2014 here there is a black sea there is a black sea now see this black sea is very much important why because guys in the black sea there are basically the black sea can provide the connectivity with the world see if you see the position of russia around the russia around the russia there are basically the cold water ports that are there fine the russia has majorly the cold water ports now what are these cold water ports they get frozen in the winters so therefore russia needs the access to the warm water port now what is this warm water port it is this that port where the water does not freezes now for this warm water port the black sea is an important here the warm water ports accessibility russia can get and the crimea as it overlooks the black sea it has been taken the crimea as it overlooks the black sea it has been taken by the russia number 1 and now russia wants to take more parts of the ukraine as well is it clear we will talk little bit more on to this particular dimension in just in a few minutes i am just priming you up for understanding this particular thing fine we'll understand it again also don't worry okay uh, <coughs> diaspora means diaspora the people of one particular country living in another country indian people living in oman they are indian diaspora chinese people living in usa they are the chinese diaspora clear now so basically guys when we talk about ukraine when we talk about ukraine ukraine was the part of the ussr till 1991 in 1991 the ussr got collapsed and the 14 republics came out of the ussr is it clear and the ukraine was one of a republic that came out of the um, that came out of the 1991 collapse of the ussr now guys the ukraine it got independence after 1991 but the ukraine has been very much important for russia since the ancient times the ukraine has been believed to be as an intrinsic part of the russia is it clear since uh, since the rule of the tsars ukraine has been believed to be the part of russia only however now it became independent however guys when we talk about the ukraine's importance post 1991 it was one of uh, it was the second uh, basically it was the second most populous country amongst the countries that got independent the new 14 republics that were formed the ukraine was the second most populous and it also had the second largest economy fine after these republics got independence now guys when we talk about the ukraine ukraine is also the second largest country into the entire europe as well fine it has a major ports on the black sea i told you that on the black seas there are the warm water ports which don't get frozen so it also has the access to many of the ports and they it the ukraine it shares border with the four of the nato countries now the nato stands for north atlantic treaty organization nato it is a military alliance which is led by the usa 
it is said that all the members who are the of the nato if there is any attack on any one of the member it will be believed that it is a attack on entire grouping and all will come together now this nato it is a us's military alliance and as ukraine is bordering the four nato countries so it is believed that the ukraine is going more towards the side of usa and if ukraine will go side towards the side of usa see this particular map Ukraine's position is very strategic in comp when the Russia is concerned. So if Ukraine became more pro-West, if it became more pro-NATO, what will happen? Russia will later face the problem. Is it clear? So basically the Ukraine, fine. Um, it has a very important problem, uh, important position. Now, when we talk about the Europe, Europe depends on Russia for about one third of its natural gas already onto the Nord article. We have seen this particular thing. Now, this particular gas, fine, much of it will be provided from the Nord Stream pipelines. But guys, there are still the significant pipelines that are going through the Ukraine. The old pipelines are still passing from the Ukraine. So therefore, controlling the Ukraine is also important for enhancing the Russia's pipeline security. So these are all the importance of the Ukraine that is there. Now guys, when we talk about the end of the Cold War that has happened in the 1990s, now NATO had always tried to expand towards the East. It had tried to expand towards the Russia. So all the countries who are bordering the Russia, they can come into the stronghold of the West. So since 1990s, NATO is trying this particular thing. 14 new countries have joined the NATO after the 1990s. Is it clear? Fine. This is something that has happened. Now, now guys, Russia views that even the Ukraine might go into the NATO camp. Ukraine is not a NATO member right now. But in 2008, in 2008, the Ukraine has signed a assurance with the NATO. And by this 2008 assurance, the Ukraine, Ukraine can join the NATO also. So this is a very big fear that is into the mind of the Russia. And because of this particular fear, Russia has uh, basically... After the, because of this particular fear, what has happened in 2014, the Crimea was annexed. The Crimea, that was the part of the Ukraine that has been annexed by the Russia. Because what will happen if tomorrow Ukraine will be annexed? Fine, then, the, then they will lost all of the accessibility towards the Black Sea. So therefore, the Crimea has already been annexed by the Russia because there is a fear into the minds of Russia. Moreover, guys, the pro-Russian president in the Ukraine was removed in 2014. And since then, the Russia believes that the political support into the Ukraine also is not there very much high. Moreover, at the same time, at the same time, the NATO is also going towards the Russia. How NATO is going towards, sorry, NATO is, sorry, Ukraine is going towards the West. How the Ukraine is going towards the West? We have find that the joint military exercise has been conducted and the weapons, fine, you uh, anti-tank missiles are being provided to the Ukraine by the US. So it shows that the basically tilt of Ukraine is more towards the West. Fine. So this is the entire thing that is happening. Fine. So this is, guys, the entire thing that is happening here. Now understand this particular thing understand what has happened as ukraine was becoming more and more tense russia said that we will annex the ukraine we will invade the ukraine russia said we will invade the ukraine usa says that if you will invade the ukraine we will come in the between nato will come in between and we will never you allow you to invade the ukraine so this is every third everyday drama that was going on now in this thing india was not saying anything up till now India was very much silent. Now for the first time few days back, India had broken their silence and India has spoken something. Now what India has spoken? India has just made a very generic statement which India always makes. India said we are observing the situation and we will aim that a diplomatic solution to this particular problem should be found. Diplomatic solution to this particular problem should be found. This is the statement that has been made by the India. Is it clear or not? Now guys, India is basically also confused that how to behave into this particular thing. Now see, India is also very much confused. How India is confused? There are certain things which I want to tell you here. Suppose there is a USA. Here is Russia. There is Ukraine in between. Fine. USA is there. Russia is there. Ukraine is there. Now, let's say here is India. Let's say here is India. Now, on the Ukraine, either India will take the side of the USA or India will take the side of the Russia. If India 
take the side of the USA, what will happen? The Russia will get irritated. Russia will get irritated. And if Russia gets irritated, what will happen? The Russia and the China, their, their nexus can be built, their alliance can be built. And if Russia becomes more, if Russia goes more towards the side of China, if Russia goes more towards the side of China, there is the Russia-China axis that will be developed. And this Russia-China axis might not be good for the India because at the end of the day, Russia is important for India, for the energy, for the weapon, for the defense, Russia is important. So therefore, India cannot afford Russia going towards the China and Russia-China axis. So basically, USA's stand cannot be taken if we want to uh, make sure that the Russia is happy. But at the same time, guys, if we take the stand of Russia, if state take the stand of Russia, what will happen? The USA will get angry. And if USA will get angry, then guys, again, the India will have a problem. Why India will have a problem? There are many number of factors. Factor number one, Factor number one, that USA is cooperating with the India in many of the initiatives. For example, the quadrilateral security dialogue is there. In the quadrilateral security dialogue, USA is cooperating with the India. And this quad has actually been a counterweight to the China. It has been a counterweight to the China. If India go more towards the side of Russia, this quad which has acted as a counterweight to China, here the India might face some kind of a problem. That is one thing that is there. Second thing guys that the USA can provide India much of a support in terms of if there is economic support that can be provided, then the technological support can be provided. Clear? Then guys, in the nuclear program also, the India, now the USA is very much inclined you towards the India. Okay? Then guys, thirdly, the USA and the Europe, they are working on to the build back better future, build back better world. Build back better world. Now this build back better or B3W, build back better or this B3W, it is a kind of a project that envisages to counter the Belt and Road Initiative of China. Now under the Belt and Road Initiative, China is making infrastructure. So under the to counter the Belt and Road Initiative, B3W has been proposed. Now this B3W, fine, will help India also because guys, India also wants to counter this Belt and Road Initiative. But if we take the side of Russia, all these things will go away. So whatever India do, India is in a dilemma. So therefore, what India has done, India has made a very diplomatic statement. They said that we are observing the situation and we want that it should be resolved as soon as possible. So this is something that has happened here in this particular direction. So guys, that is all about it. And now moving to the next article. Now, EPFO to appoint auditor to track fund managers. So let's see this particular article. This article will be important for GS paper number two regulatory bodies. GS paper number two regulatory bodies. It will be important. And in GS paper number three also. Fine the economic issues it will be important so let's understand that how this article is going to be important so epfo to appoint the auditors to track fund managers epfo to appoint auditors to track fund manager first of all let's understand what this epfo what this provident fund is all about now see this particular thing there is a person there is a person who is working let's say in a factory now this person while his productive age he will earn the salary he will use that particular salary for meeting all his demand but what will happen during the old age of this particular person so in order to make now in the old age obviously he cannot work actively so therefore he needs some money to meet his basic needs so therefore there comes the idea of the provident fund idea of the provident fund comes here now the idea of provident fund is that that while this particular person is earning what will what will do we will earn some particular money from this particular person's salary and that particular money will be will be deposited in a specific fund that money will be deposited in a specific fund this particular fund will be managed by a particular body is it clear or not and then when this particular person will get retired we will give all that particular money that we have deducted from this particular person's salary every month and in the last the person will get a big lump sum amount of money and by that that person will be able to meet many of its expenses so guys, there comes the idea of the provident fund. Now, basically, what has happened in the India, there is the EPFO, there is EPFO, that is the Employees Provident Fund Organization. Now, this EPFO, it is a government organization that manages the provident fund and pension accounts for the workforce that is engaged into the organized sector in India. 
fine now this epfo it implements the employees provident fund and miscellaneous provisions act 1952 the epfo implements this particular act now guys when we talk about the employees provident fund it is one of a scheme under this particular act it is one of a scheme under this particular act fine that is the employees provident fund and miscellaneous act now i told you told you already the employee provident fund money will be directed from your salary and that money will be uh, deposited into this employee provident fund account and that will be managed by the epfo once you will get retired this money will be given to you along with some basic return that will be generated clear now guys how much is to be contributed how much is deduction so the employee his 12% of the basic salary will be deducted. If let's say 100 rupees your basic salary, 12% will be deducted. And the 12% contribution additional will be made from the employer also. So if 12 rupees are being deducted, the same 12 rupees will be contributed by the employer also. So there is a lot of benefit into the EPF. Now guys, as per the current law in India, find a person who is who uh, who is uh, whose monthly salary does not exceed 15,000 rupees, fine. That person has to mandatorily become the member of the EPF. For him, EPF has to be taken. Fine. This is one thing that has happened. Now, guys, this is the EPF. It is going on. Now, I told you that a large number of money is being collected into this particular fund. Now, where this, what to do of this particular fund? Now, this particular fund is invested in government securities. Large number of things are there. But, guys, seven years back, Seven years back, the EPFO, Employee Provident Fund Organization, they decided that the money that is being collected here, that money will also be invested into the equity market. That money will be also be invested into the stock market. Now, you know this particular thing. You know this particular thing that when we talk about the stock market, stock market is a very risky kind of a industry. Find a lot of risk is there. So, what if the person who is getting his money deducted what if his invest what what is if all that particular money get drowned then this particular person will face a lot of injustice so therefore the money is being invested into the stock market there but at the same time stock market is to be regularly monitored and in order to in order to further expand that monitoring that money is going only into the good stocks money is only going into the blue chip stocks which will give return what has happened epfo will now epfo will now appoint the independent auditors EPFO will now appoint the independent auditors. These independent auditors will keep an eye on the investment transactions and they will report that deviation. So that entire money, the, yeah, the auditors will see that okay, they are not going into some risky kind of investment. Now auditor will also be tasked with taking an analysis of the instances of the downgrade. Now see, the market has went down. The stock market is now down. Let's say that there was the money that was invested into those stocks which are went into a downgrade. So whether earlier we have noted this particular thing that the downgrade might be there, whether that thing was noted by the fund managers or not, or if it was noted, what was done by the fund managers, all these things will be seen by these auditors. Moreover, if the EPF fund is uninvested for a significant period of time then also the it will be seen that why the money has not been invested what is the opportunity cost that has come is it clear moreover into the previous whatever the issues that have been highlighted with respect to investing the money into the stock market those issues will be also be checked by these auditors so basically uh, this is the thing that epfo is appointing the audit managers so this is called guys all about this particular article i hope that you have understood it and now we'll move to the next article Limits of power. Supreme Court serves a reminder that the House should work within the constitutional parameters. Now, guys, this article will be important for GS paper number 2. GS paper number 2, legislative and constitutional restraint. Legislative and constitutional restraint. Now, what has happened? Basically, uh, first of all, I'll tell you the context. Basically, uh, the Maharashtra Assembly, Maharashtra Legislative Assembly had imposed one year suspension on the 12 of the BJP legislators. The Maharashtra Assembly said that these legislators, they were behaving in an unruly manner and because of this particular thing, there was the one year ban that was imposed on these people. Now guys, what had happened? The Supreme Court has interfered into this particular manner and Supreme Court had said that this one year suspension that is there, 
what the supreme court has happened the supreme court had said that this one year suspension that has been there it is illegal it is wrong it is unconstitutional it has been said that what the house can do house can suspend for that term only if i had done a bad behavior in this term you can suspend you can basically uh, suspend me only for that particular term one year term suspension is not allowed it is going wrong what, what has happened the supreme court has provided that um if there is a disorderly conduct fine disorderly conduct should be should be reprimanded but a kind of a specific punitive character it is not to be there now one very logical reasoning is there why the supreme court has said it wrong so this is the logic logical reasoning that comes here see suppose there was a member suppose there was a member now this member had done some kind of a misbehavior into the assembly you do one you do you can do either two things either you can ex you can you can carry the expulsion of this member you can carry the expulsion of this member expel that particular member fine that can be done or second thing you can suspend that particular member now the suspension could be let's say if the judge just that particular session the suspension is there then fine what had happened the maharashtra has suspended the person for one year now guys if in case the suspension would not have been there if the member would have been expelled if the member would have been expelled then what can happen the election commission of india could have conducted the election into that particular constituency and by the election what would have happened a new person would have come and he would have represented the constituency but now what has happened now what has happened you have not expelled so therefore the new election cannot happen but at the same time the suspension is for one year the suspension is for one year so for this entire one year who will represent that particular constituency what you have done you have basically suspended 12 of the legislators now for that one entire year who will represent those constituencies who will keep forward the grievances of these constituencies if in case there is any kind of a problem so you either expel them and carry the new election and bring the new legislator or just go for the suspension for that particular session only this one year suspension doesn't makes any sense this is the entire logic that has been given by the supreme court here clear guys written here you can download the pdf and can see there also now when this particular supreme court had said that you cannot go for one year suspension the government are saying that rather the supreme court is becoming over adventurous because why there is article 212 there is article 212 now this article 212 gives the provides this particular thing that the supreme court will not interfere into the matters of state the supreme court will not interfere into the legislative assembly and the functioning of the legislative assembly of a state and here what had happened supreme court had interfered so therefore the government says that the supreme court doesn't have any mandate but the supreme court had said that we have the mandate because at the end of the day we are the guardians of the constitution at the end of the day we need to see that whether whatever you are doing is it under the bound of constitution or whether you are just into the name of constitutional provision uh, you are trying to abuse your power so supreme court said that we have the power and we say that this is wrong you cannot go with it now the article provides that such kind of thing becomes important into the present time why because we see today that the ruling and opposition they are not at the good terms fine if whenever the opposition are coming with their grievances ruling is sidelining them so in this particular direction such kind of thing becomes important so that is all guys about it and now we'll move to the next article show commitment to equity in the budget so this article gs paper number 3 we can utilize it now basically guys this article is talking about that the budget should show some equity equity different different vulnerable sections are there for them something is to be done developmental expenditure are there which are very much needed for the poor people that are to be increased recently already we have seen in our article also what has happened on the inequality oxfam has released their report the report was the inequality kills now this particular report had said that actually uh, world's 50% of the new poor they are in india 84% of indian households they have suffered a loss of income 4.6 crore people they have fell in extreme poverty in india inequality has increased a lot and basically the government it has a constitutional mandate to reduce this particular inequality that has increased why there is a responsibility of the government it is because the directive principle of state policy that is the part 4 of the indian constitution that is there 
Now, when we talk about the directive principle of state policy within the DPSP, we have the article number 38 and article number 39 specifically, which talks about reducing the inequality. Article 38 says that the state shall strive to promote the welfare of the people by securing and protecting the social order of justice. So inequality is to be removed if justice has to be given. Then the Article 39C says that the state will make sure that the concentration of wealth and means of production is not there. Now, when the concentration of wealth is not there, what is being said? Make sure that the equality is coming, inequality is being removed. So by the virtue of Article 38-39, the DPSP, the government has a mandate to remove this inequality. Now guys, when we said, it has been said that many of the factors of inequality has not been considered. India is one of the only country in the world where in the time of COVID-19 pandemic, the health budget declined by 10%. Health budget declined by 10%. Now when the health budget has declined, obviously we know that the poor people will face a lot of burn. Fine. So it will further increase the inequality. Then it has been said that the social security expenditure has also in reduced. Now who are dependent on social security? The poor people. So social security expenditure has declined from 1.5% in 2021 to just 0.6% in the budget of 2022. So this is also the problem that has come. At the same time, it has been said that the social security pensions, they have just been at 200 and 300 rupees a month from last 15 years. It has also not been taken in account. See, giving poor people money, increasing the health will actually be helping a more of implication for the poor people. Why? Because then they don't have to spend their own disposable income. Their income they can use in some other things. So therefore, it is important. Now, guys. It has also been provided that why more inequality is coming because onto the food front also government is not paying the attention. Now what this particular point says. So you might be knowing that we have the National Food Security Act of 2013 which provides the food as a right to the poor people. Now understand one thing what has happened in the National Food Security Act there is a kind of a mandate. There is a mandate. For example the mandate is like this 100 crore people will be provided the food. 100 crore people will be provided the food. So there is an uh, there is basically a list of absolute numbers that is there. Absolute numbers are there. That is, these many people will be provided benefit. Now see this thing. That last census happened in 2011. National Food Security Act came in 2013. Nearly 10 years have happened. But don't you think that in 10 years, more new people have become poor? Population of the poor people has increased. Yes, it has increased. But how they will be provided a benefit if you had frozen an absolute list, absolute numbers that only these people will be given? What will happen? The new poors, they will not be included. This is the problem that has come. Moreover, when we talk about the pandemic, basically there is a generation of children who had forgotten what a formal education is. Schools are closed. There is a 6% decline into the education budget. So, for the school children also, some reforms are to be taken. So, therefore, guys, there is an expectation into this particular budget that this particular trend will be reversed. According to the Jan Sarokar, according to the Jan Sarokar, what Jan Sarokar says, Jan Sarokar says that basically 2% of wealth tax is needed to be imposed. Fine, the people who have a wealth, 2% of wealth tax is needed to be imposed. At the same time, it also says, it also says that there needs to be 33% inheritance tax also that is to be imposed. Now, what is inheritance tax? Suppose you have inherited 100 crore rupees wealth from your father, then on that inheritance tax is to be imposed. Fine. On the top 1% of our population. And uh, now, oh, sorry, if this particular thing will done on the top 1% of people, if this thing will be done on top 1% of people, 11 lakh crore rupees per annum can be collected which can be used for the social security. 11 lakh crore rupees. So this is guys this entire suggestion that has come in this article. And now we'll move to the next article. A year on from Myanmar's uh, Annus Horribilis. So guys this is talking about one year of the Myanmar's coup that has happened. We'll not go too much into the detail because not very much important but guys the broad themes we'll see here. So we have seen that the military coup happened in Myanmar on 1st February 2021 last year. Now one year has happened and basically the democracy had been declined since then. Now when we talk about the history of Myanmar, there are the repeated military dictatorships that have come in the Myanmar. 
1958 to 1960 dictatorship military dictatorship was there 1962 to 2011 again the military dictatorship has uh, was there into the myanmar and now in 2021 again the military dictatorship came so in 2011 there was the democratic transition of myanmar that happened from authoritarianism to the democracy the elections were were carried into the myanmar after 2010 fine and in 2011 the new government was formed now this new government that was formed into the myanmar it is a government on compromise so the government will be there will be a civilian government which will be constituted by election but guys then it also will be having a lot of consideration with military also fine so basically um 2008 constitution that was there on which this particular new government was formed it has provided extensive powers to the military of the myanmar that has been there now guys in 2020 what happened the military can can we uh, conceived that the elections that had happened fine they were fraud and on to this particular thing what happened they removed the democratic elected government by aung san suu kyi so the aung san suu kyi's party nld fine it won the election but it was removed by saying that the elections were corrupted fine and then what happened it had actually removed the democracy and established full control so instability has come into the myanmar since then world bank had said that the critically weak democratic structure critically weak economy is plaguing in the myanmar now into this particular direction into this particular direction the countries are coming together fine mediation are being carried the asean asean has called for a consensus five point consensus to be imposed onto the myanmar asean had provided this thing that the there are five points that are needed to be followed that is immediate cessation of violence in myanmar the military of myanmar need to immediately stop the violence constructive dialogue among all the parties fine constructive dialogue among all the parties so that how this particular matter can be resolved appointment of a special asean envoy okay to facilitate the dialogue a special officer will be sent the humanitarian assistance is to be provided to the people immediately and a visit uh, by the envoy to myanmar clear all these things are to be done into the myanmar now guys up till now the military of the myanmar had not agreed to on all of these particular things even the west is putting the pressure onto the myanmar saying that the democracy is under the threat and the sanctions are being imposed now guys when we talk about india fine india when we talk about india india has done much to shape and strengthen our diplomatic efforts at the un and uh, through its support to the asean fine now india is helping to put the myanmar's democracy back onto the rails but guys uh, into the same direction india had also provided the assistance also recently the made in india vaccines were also provided to the india foreign secretary's visit was also there into the myanmar by the india so india is actually trying a lot to put again myanmar onto the democracy that is something but guys if i tell you practically india cannot do again much here by why because if you see here that uh that here we have myanmar here we have india here we have china if we become too much assertive against the myanmar 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 will go against uh, will go near to the china and then myanmar china access will again be problematic for india so this is something that is there so this is all guys about this particular thing fine i hope that you have understood it apart from it nothing extra is there into this particular article now we'll move to the next article mahatma gandhi the out of the box thinker fine so basically the 74th anniversary of mahatma gandhi ji's death is there fine 74th anniversary of the mahatma gandhi ji's death is there now so mahatma gandhi has been the out of the box thinker this article says now guys in this article no factual substance is there no conceptual aspect is there this article is just talking about the about the writer's view about the mahatma gandhi so he how he sees mahatma gandhi it is being talked about what are the values that he appreciate into the gandhi ji this is just being talked about so if you want just give it is a reading as a matter of your own pleasure clear so just sit and read this particular article however with respect to the conceptual aspect nothing is there so this is about the author's view about gandhi ji so that is there about that is all now we'll move to the next article <clears throat> government moves to plan to link digital ids this article will be important in gs paper number 2 governance reforms governance reform this particular article will be important now see this particular thing guys today if you if today if we talk about you as a citizen you have been given the multiple ids fine you whenever you are talking in different capacity there is a different id that is there 
there is one of your students id then there is one id for a teacher's identity farmer's identity is there landowner's some specific identity is there as a customer of a bank you have a specific identity as a driver you have a specific identity you have a driver's license as a owner of vehicle there is a specific identity registration certificate is there as a pensioner there is a specific identity for you so whenever you are interacting with any government department in any capacity there is a different kind of id that you need to have multiple ids are there now in order to remove these multiple ids fine what had happened the ministry of electronics and it miti ministry of electronics and it it has come out with the india enterprise architecture 2.0 india enterprise architecture 2.0 it is also called as india 2.0 it is also called as india 2.0 now into this india 2.0 the ministry of electronics and it it has suggested it has suggested that we should create the federated digital identities federated digital identities now what is this federated digital identity it is being said that all these identities need to be connected with each other all these identities need to connected with each other and so that this particular thing what has happened they are to be connected with each other whenever you are going to interact with any government interface you will use one this unified identity and behind this unified identity all the identities are connected at the back end so it is like this that there is one unified identity that is to be created and at the back end all your different identities will be there for example your driving license your pan card your ration card then your some other other identities they will be connected at the back end with one of a federated digital identity that is being talked about is it clear or not now at that uh, at the authenticity the, uh, the 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 citizens have the option that okay which identity at the backdrop they want to get uh, they want to get vetted with now basically electronic regist registries can be linked via the ids to allow easy paperless onboarding of citizens fine for example the beneficiary is registered for the pds scheme that record will be linked to aadhar by the pds for storing the aadhar number so any one id could be there aadhar could be there so basically at the background the ids will be connected with each other so this is just a kind of an approach that has come now see in the question the question will not be coming on to this particular thing only but in the good governance this digital ids and india 2.0 architecture we can talk about which can further enhance authenticity of your answers so guys understand this thing also which article stand alone will be important and which articles not stand alone but as a reference can be used so this article can be used as a reference in good governance so that is all guys about this particular thing i hope that you have got it and now that is uh, and now we have come to an end to the today's newspaper analysis so that is all for today guys please take care of yourselves tomorrow we'll be meeting at 6:30 am in the live till then take care if you have liked please do hit the like button thank you so much